Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Todd Clint's SharePoint Podcast number 283, recorded live Monday, March 7th, 2016. I am your host, Todd Clint, uh, still rocking the new time here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, working pretty well. It's um, I'm getting a good night's sleep, and, uh, and, and I need more beauty sleep. I think we would all agree with that. So the, the new time working well, and here we are. We've got a good, good audience in the chat room. It's all going great. Um, and as always, the people that make this possible, my, my sugar daddy and sugar mamas, mommies, sugar mommy sounds weird. Sugar da- anyway, uh, the folks that pay my bills and all that, folks at Rackspace. And you can find out about all the fun things we do with SharePoint at sharepoint.rackspace.com. And because we are a full featured shop, we also support the other, though less uh, entertaining, products for Microsoft at www.rackspace.microsoft.com. You can hear about all of that. We're going to have a story about that here in a, in a minute, but it's all there. And then while you're out on the internet, you can go out to toddclint.com and find out what's up with me. And you can go to twitter.com slash toddclint, Instagram uh, slash toddclint, uh, tinder.com. I'm just kidding. I'm not on Tinder. My wife would kill me so hard, but I'm out there all over the internet. You can also email me todd.clint at rackspace.com. Um, and I'm all out there. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you like, what you don't like. Start with what you like though. I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm like a banana. I bruise easily. So let me know uh, what you love, but uh, we would uh, love to hear from you when you get out there. Production notes. This will be, there's not a lot uh, to talk about. Last week, everything came out pretty well. So that, uh, that worked out the afternoon thing kind of, uh, kind of in the, in a groove here. I'm getting my notes done earlier. I'm blocking meeting times out. Everything is, is going along here. Um, Mark Chrisman in the chat room just asked what my Ashley Madison profile was. Well, n- number one, Mark, I am flattered. Honest I am. I appreciate your attention, but I just think that's probably not a great place for me. Otherwise get that dump, that database dump from Ashley Madison and, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, so production's going well, so I think we're in good shape. When we moved all of this, I talked about one of the reasons that I wanted to move this was so I could get guests on, specifically guests from Europe, because the last the, the time that I used to do this, 8.30 p.m. was pretty obnoxious for them. It was like 2, 3, 4 in the morning. And they, you know, I wanted to get European guests in, but it just wasn't feasible for those guys. Now that I'm early, now I can uh, can do that, and here in a couple of weeks, we're going to take advantage of that. So on a March 21st, set your calendars for that. That is two weeks from today. You have two weeks to prepare yourself. I will be having my first guest at the new time, my first European guest um, at the new time, Tony Francola of SP Dot Kit fame will be dropping by the podcast. The guys at SP Dot Kit put out a new version here a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to bring Tony on board to kind of tell you guys about it let you know how awesome it is. SB.Kit, as you'll notice, is one of the, the folks that advertises on my blog, and that is because I'm a big fan of their product. And I'll, I'll tell the story a little bit more when Tony comes on, but I really didn't want to like their product. I knew Tony before it came out. He and I had talked at the MVP Summit, and we were friends and all that. And the SP.Kit came out, and I really didn't want to like the SP.Kit. And Then I tried it and now I love it. So having Tony come over, drop in for a few minutes and tell you guys all about it. And that will be pretty exciting. He's a little nervous. So you guys in the chat room, you have to dial the heckling down a little bit. And I don't know. So he's from Croatia. They use a metric system there. So if you guys heckle me at a 10 or 11, whatever, uh, maybe with the metric system, you'll only heckle him at like a three or a four. I don't know how that translates, but Tony's a good guy. He's a little nervous about coming on. And plus it's going to be really late at night for him. So it's still going to be like, you know, 10 or 11, but it'll be good. Uh, <laughs> Luminetti in the chat room saying, do all the chat room guests get free copies? If it were up to me, I would be absolutely fine with that. That's something you guys have to take up with Tony. I don't know. I can, I can send him an email maybe and let him know that I've got some, uh, some folks in the chat room that respond well to gifts. I don't know. Maybe he can get you guys SP.cat hats or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what, uh, what Tony brings with him. But March 21st is when that's coming up. So uh, make sure you show up for that. Now, like I said, when I do, now that we've moved the netcast to the afternoon, I don't have that hour that I can prepare for this right before I go on air because I'm working the hour, working the hour before this goes on air. And 
because of that, I've been prepping myself ahead of time. And I had this all laid out. I had the order of everything was going to come in. You know, you always want to start with big stories or end with big stories. There's a whole thing about all that. But then about two hours ago, ago something happened that just absolutely bubbled to the, the, the top. And I cannot believe the thing that I that I saw. So the first thing that I have to, to say about this, uh, when I first read this thing that we're going to be talking about was, holy crap. For those of you that are on Twitter right now and and or, or you know have RSS feeds and see stuff quickly, you probably know what I'm talking about. Microsoft released this afternoon that the next version of SQL Server, and I can't even say this with a straight face because it is so ridiculous, the next version of SQL Server, SQL 2016, will run on Linux. <laughs> yeah, let me say that again very slowly. SQL Server will run on Linux. Yeah. Uh, so I, April 1st isn't for another month or so, three weeks. This was very much like an, an April 1st sort of thing. In the, in the States, we've got uh, April Fool's Day, which is hysterical because April Fool's Day is the only day in the year when people actually look at things they read online and try to vet them to see if they're true, as opposed to every other day of the year where we just, you know, uh, say whatever, uh, believe whatever. So I got that. So I saw the post and I saw all the Twitter stuff. I looked at the URL. The URL was blogs.microsoft.com. I'm like, this is crazy. I opened up. I actually opened up an incognito browser in case it was some kind of weird phishing thing and looked at it there. It looked legit. I finally emailed a couple of my friends at Microsoft and I'm like, this can't be true, right? And it is. As of today, as of March 7th, 2016, SQL Server on Linux is in private preview, which means they've been working on it for a while. It's it's already a thing. It already exists in private preview. And as of today, it will run on Ubuntu or in a Docker image, which is just amazing. If you think about uh, spinning up a container with SQL in it, uh, that is just, uh, I, again, I, I am still in denial about this whole thing. This still cognitive dissonance. I just can't, uh, can't quite make it all work out. But so SQL, <laughs> I just have to keep, I have to keep saying it out loud because it doesn't seem real. SQL server today runs on uh, Ubuntu or inside of a Docker image, private preview right now. And it will be a real deal, like, you know, production ready thing in mid 2017. So there are a bunch of things about this. And, and again, this is, was just surreal. This is like I was telling somebody on uh, Twitter, this is definitely one of those, I will always remember where I was when blank, <laughs> you know, uh, and for me, one of them will be when I heard the SQL server will run on Linux, which is just crazy. One of the people that I initially uh, reached out to to find out if this is a real deal or not was Bill Bear at Microsoft, senior product, whatever, manager, head muckety muck. To hear him tell the story, he runs the company. I suspect that's a bit of an exaggeration. Um, but I asked him, I'm like, is this real? And if this is real, what are the implications on our beloved SharePoint? What, you know, will, will SharePoint support a SQL server on Linux and his official response? And I quote, I would say that while there should be no technical barriers to leveraging SharePoint with SQL server on Linux, it's too early to comment as to whether or not it would be possible. Once those details are known, it will require testing before ultimately being declared supported or unsupported. His excellence built. Nah, he, I got to quit pasting his stuff right in there. Um, so, so basically what Bill's saying is it sounds like it would work so long as SQL on Linux provides the things that SharePoint needs for SQL. And we know that SharePoint doesn't require a lot of fancy things with SQL. You basically need a you know, an, an address and a port number and a login, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and, and SQL takes care of the rest. Linux for years and years has has been able to authenticate against Windows systems with things, uh, PAMs, uh, authentication providers, uh, authentication modules. So there's already this idea that you'll be able to have your SQL server on Linux authenticate against Windows. That's not a big deal. Uh, but it is just crazy. So it sounds like you know, I need to get me into this private preview and find out and just spin a SharePoint instance up and point it at it and see what happens and uh, and, and find out from there. But again, rem remember, there is a difference between, holy crap, this works, and 
if I call Microsoft and I'm doing this, will they hang up on me or not? So, you know, the supported or, uh, or unsupported thing of that. So I follow a lot of SQL folks on Twitter. I've got a lot of friends in the SQL community and it's been awesome watching all of their tweets come across because there's so many aspects of this that just, you know, once you start thinking it through, there's all kinds of really crazy uh, questions. <laughs> and I just saw one now that I didn't have in my notes, but Brent Ozar uh, said, the adoption rate of SQL on Linux is going to make Windows Phone look popular. <laughs> so I do love that one. Thanks for that. Um, but some of the other great ones were, for, one of them was from Argenis Fernandez. He said, I'm betting that Microsoft will also port PowerShell and a whole bunch of other stuff to Linux. This is crazy. Uh, Tom Larock. Uh, SQL Rockstar on Twitter said, SQL Server on Linux. Wow, that's going to scare the beep out of people that are afraid of server core. And he's absolutely right. Um, Karen Lopez, and she put, if your traditional SQL Server DBA is missing, check to see if he's curled up under his desk uh, and, and tell him he's still pretty. And one of my favorite ones was Microsoft. The, one of their things is this whole brave new world and all that. And... Um, so Paul Thra tweeted, SQL Server on Linux? This isn't a brave new world. It's freaking science fiction story. And I'm, I'm with you. I just not, uh, did not believe it. So uh, Nick Charlo, uh, I mispronounced, I'm going to make, Nick C in the chat room mentions that he hopes they keep the versions aligned so that uh, things will work. I, you know, I don't know because Microsoft doesn't have the greatest track record with that. Office on the Mac, the, the, the version numbers don't match up exactly, and the years don't mac, match up with Windows. And so hopefully SQL will. And again, hopefully, I think Microsoft understands that, <laughs> that, that uh, the clients accessing SQL and Linux will be Windows clients, and uh, we'll keep those numbers accordingly. Uh, uh, Brian LaLancet. So all of the Canadians now in the chat room are uh, mocking me. And Brian LaLancet makes sure that I know that Nick's last name is pronounced Charlebois, which is how I would have pronounced it. Um, it just, I uh, got to you know, you, I'm live. You guys are making fun of me. My IMs are going off. SQL server runs on Linux. It's kind of a tough time for me right now. I got a lot going on. Uh, so just be glad that I'm not drooling out of the corner of my mouth here. But if anybody gets in on this inside preview of SQL, let me know how it runs. Let me know what you think. And I'm going to try to get in. And, and this is another thing is I am surprised that they've kept this a secret so long. This is like an apple size secret. This is amazing. And I have not heard a whiff or a sniff or a hint of this until it was out, until they had it. I saw this is just crazy. Uh, anyway, that that's the big story. I just, uh, I'm still reeling from all of that. And it was, uh, it was a big announcement and I think it's going to, uh, I think it's going to be kind of a big deal uh, when this comes out. So the other news from the SQL Server team today, which now seems kind of weak and anticlimactic, is that um, the first release canon of SQL Server 2016 is out eh, for Windows. Mm. Um, yeah, so again, you can go out and download... Uh, a free download for a 180-day trial of the release candidate for SQL 2016. There are a bunch of things in there, a bunch of things for us SharePoint folks. Uh, so, you know, take that first spin. That will be the first class SQL client for SharePoint 2016. So as you're thinking about testing SharePoint 2016, pairing it up with SQL 2016 is uh, is good. So that is out there. But again, seems kind of anticlimactic compared to all this other uh, <laughs> all this other stuff going on. So the thing that was going to be my main story before this got uh, dropped in my lap was something that Microsoft released last week. And I thought it was kind of cool. So I've been, and I know where this is going to go in the chat room, ready your typing fingers, uh, folks. I've been following uh, dev.office.com and following the patterns and practices thing. Now, my excuse for following patterns and practices, because they have a lot of PowerShell in there and they use a lot of CSOM with PowerShell, and that's why I follow patterns and practices. I'm not one of those other things that we won't name. But last week, they announced a responsive UI package for SharePoint on-prem and, uh, and I can't remember if it works in the cloud or not. I think maybe just on-prem. Uh, so it's on-prem 2013 and 2016. 
And what this is, is this is a some, some functionality that you can add to your SharePoint 2013 and 2016 servers and your sites to give them a responsive UI. And responsive UI means one UI that looks, you know, one way on your desktop, but if you hit that same place on your phone, the UI is smart enough to understand that you're on your phone and it automatically uh, rejiggers things for your tablet, for your phone and all of that. And now I can tell you that I have not actually installed this yet, but there's a video and all that. You can download it from GitHub, uh, so if you don't already have a GitHub account, go out there, get a GitHub account, check that out. But from what I've heard from the people that have installed it, it's a little hairy to install. So for goodness sakes, do not try this in production. You Don't be that guy because it looks like there's some, uh, some, some mess involved with this. But if you've got a test environment, SharePoint 2013, 2016. Check this out. It's on dev.office.com. Of course, notes in the show notes for the show. If you're listening to the audio version, the show notes are always at toddclint.com uh, slash podcast 283. Well, the notes are not always at podcast 283. The notes are always at podcast and then whatever podcast number it is, you guys, uh, you guys get what I'm saying. But you can get all the links for everything I'm talking about in there. So sometime this week, I'll try to make some plans for Installing that and just seeing exactly how uh, how well it works, those things. Another thing, and this was from a listener who is not in the room, a listener and a friend, honestly. The man bought me donuts once, and I'll uh, forever be in his uh, debt for that. Jack Fra, he sent me this blog post that he sent. Where's my window? Goodness sakes. There we go. Uh, and this was a good story. So we've all been talking about lately hybrid environments. A little bit on-prem, a little bit in the cloud. And one of the things that you need to get that working is identity. We've talked about that a few times. We're going to talk about it in a minute here. Using Azure AD Connect, get your uh, identity synced up, maybe dropping some ADFS on top of that uh, for some of those advanced things. Jack was in the process of doing this, migrating some of his data and his users to the cloud. And a couple of years ago, he discovered a problem. And it's telling or sad that he discovered this problem a couple of years ago, and we're talking about the blog post now. So it's been like 18 months, something like that. But what Jack discovered was that when you're migrating, and this is using tools like ShareGate or something like that, if you're migrating content that has reference to a user on-prem that does not exist online, the content didn't used to get migrated over. So there was a potential to lose data when you're doing these migrations. Now, there's a lot of different ways to handle this. And I didn't, so Jack's blog post is very thorough and in-depth. And I read it a few days ago and have forgotten 90% of it. But there are a lot of different ways to handle this. And so the problem that this comes from is if you've got a document that the last person who edited it or the person who owned it or whatever is somebody who is no longer at your company, that user probably still exists. Well, that user still exists in SharePoint. That user may or may not still exist in your Windows Active Directory, but for whatever reason, it does not exist in your Azure Active Directory. So when the migration tools are coming through, trying to line things up, it um, um, had the, uh, you know, it couldn't find the user. So, uh, and Joanne in the chat room is asking if the content was migrated to the, and just tagged to a different user, or if you have a default, I honestly have not ever had this problem. So I, I will defer to Jack's blog post on this. But, so for me, and, and something that seems to be more common in IT environments now is, when users leave the company, their usernames are never deleted. They're disabled, they're moved to an OU someplace, but they're never removed so that if, uh, for legal reasons or whatever, if you ever need to trace things back, that user's always there. You can re-enable it, log in, get access to whatever they had access to, things like that. But, you know, given that you may have uh, tens or hundreds or thousands of these disabled users, you're probably not going to sync them up to uh, Azure Active Directory, not going to give them licenses in SharePoint Online, things like that. Um, so there was a problem with the API that didn't allow this to work out well. And, um, so Jack's blog post was simply about how the, the API has been, um, fixed and th that's all handled now. And again, since it was an API level thing, they were able to, um, fix it on the server. And I think at this point, the, 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 uh, the fix is out everywhere. So um, but that was a good thing. So I appreciate that. Um, so in the chat room, 
Daniel Glenn is saying that migration tools typically allow you to tag a common user for content with missing authors. Um, and, and that was my experience when I experienced this a couple of years ago with ShareGate. But when I did it, it was from on-prem to on-prem. I'd not done on-prem to Office 365. So, um, so I don't know. And again, I, I trust Jack. Jack and I have been friends for a while. He's pretty sharp. So I, uh, I did not validate all of this stuff. But if you've had that problem before, check out the new APIs. And I think the tools, if they haven't already been fixed, ShareGate and all that, they will be uh, updated to, to fix that. The other thing is while the Agile development bites us in the butt a lot, this is one of those examples where it was probably quicker to get the update into Office 365 than it would have been to get it on-prem. And I don't know. So it's, it's a good story. It's got a happy ending. I liked it. So there, uh, <laughs> there it goes. Speaking of your friend and mine, Office 365, Microsoft officially announced the new admin center for Office 365 uh, a couple of days ago. We talked about this, I think, a couple of weeks ago because it bit me when I was doing my presentations for SP TechCon. They were kind of rolling it out, rolling the preview out. Well, now it's a thing. Now it's a real deal. The admin center is out there. Again, Agile development's going to come in, in handy for us because there are still some things that I can't find. And I have to go check. I haven't checked since they announced it on the 4th, the official thing. But with the preview, there were some links I couldn't find. Links, and it was about... Uh, for, for me, it was when I was going through my screenshots for the Azure AD session. Normally, to walk through the checklist of all of the issues or uh, of all of the software for migrating users and downloading ID fix and all that was on the user screen in the new admin portal. It was not there. So fortunately, I had the old portal I could go to or I could download the tools uh, independently. But that was one of the things I have not checked yet to see if if that's still there. But keep in mind, you know, new portal, things are missing. So I, I would be interested to hear if you guys are using the new portal, what uh, what's missing, what's better, what's not. Uh, I'll share those things with your friends, but uh, it's here. And if you if you use any other Microsoft Online products like Azure or whatever, you'll notice it kind of looks like all of those other uh, admin tools that are out there. So check that out. Uh, log into the new Office 365 Admin Center. Spoke earlier about authentication. One of the uh, things that's near and dear to my heart in the last six to eight months has been identity. And my new friend, Azure ID Connect, wanted to mention that a week or so ago, they uh, released a new, new version of Azure ID Connect. You guys will remember me lamenting. All right, maybe whining, but we'll say lamenting that uh, three days before I did a session on Azure AD Connect for SP TechCon, they released a new version of Azure AD Connect. So a bunch of my screenshots were wrong and a bunch of my slides were wrong. That was uh, that was on February 16th, and that was version, I think, 1.1.105 or something like that. On the 26th of February, they released a new, new version, 1.1.110, out into the world and their rationale, they didn't get into it or I didn't look, but they found some bugs in the first one, version 105. So one one ten is just bug fixes. It's not a big difference like 105 was, it didn't add a bunch of new functionality or, or things like that. As they're saying in chat room, the new, new sync, 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 yes. So they're referring to the fact that the PowerShell command let now to kick off a new sync in the Azure AD Connect PowerShell is new, uh, uh, AD sync sync connection with uh, dueling syncs there. But if you've got uh, 105 out there, uh, spend some time, go out and get 110, get that installed, should be an easy upgrade. This is another good time to talk about, you know, we've got this, you know, Agile, all this and that. One of the things that the new Azure AD Connect client can do is auto update itself. So as you're going through and configuring Azure AD Connect, ask yourself if that's something you want to take advantage of. And that's yeah, I, that seems like a fairly harmless one to have auto update. I would obviously never have SharePoint auto update or SQL or man, even Windows auto updating has bit me in the keister a couple of times here in the last week. But Azure AD Connect that seems pretty low risk. The worst case scenario is it breaks syncs, and then the worst case fix for that is you spin up another VM and you reinstall it, and it works. So that would be a good way to keep you up to date, depending on what uh, what those bugs are and. Uh, 
and how nervous you are about them. The final thing that I wanted to talk about, we have the shameless self-promotion, which is the really the reason you're all here, and that's the next section. Don't worry, we're getting there. This will be kind of a new one. This is um, uh, selfless uh, promotion for someone else. So you you guys all know that kid, uh, and, he, and he's kind of slow. We all you know kind of have to help him out a little bit. A guy named Shane Young. Uh, he no longer is at Rackspace. He left Rackspace a couple of months ago, had some big ideas, had to get out on his own. And the first of his big ideas is out now and it's out on the streets and you guys can all enjoy it. Now, one of the things that uh, Shane was known for in his old days was cows. These little guys, for whatever reason, Shane really liked cows. Almost a weird creepy obsession with cows, but you know, I'm not going to judge whatever. Uh, so he had the cow thing and for whatever reason he picked the whole, Oh, that's not a cow. That's Panda. Um, for whatever reason he picked the Holstein cow, the black and white cow and his new business venture sticks with that theme to a bit. It's called bold zebras and you can find out about it at boldzebras.com. He went with another black and white animal, uh, wanted to branch out from the cow motif and this is, again, something that he, uh, Shane's always got ideas in his head. Most of them are really, really terrible. But he's just, I mean, as an entrepreneur, that's that's how he thinks. And, and getting the corporate job at Rackspace stifled some of his entrepreneurial spirit. And so now he's out doing entrepreneurial things. So Bold Zebras is a consulting company. Yeah, probably, probably a good way to explain it. Go to boldzebras.com to find out for sure. Whatever they say, if I did, if I contradict that they're right and I'm wrong. But it's kind of a tech consulting business for business. Eh. So it's, it's, <laughs> I should have practiced this. Um, it's a, a, a consultancy for customers who don't know, who, who don't do tech, but need tech and who need to have all the greatest tech, but don't want to be a tech company. You know, they've heard about this cloud thing, but do they want to do cloud? Do they want to do on-prem? or they know about this cloud thing, but which makes the most sense for them, Gmail or Office 365, all of these tech decisions that companies have to make these days, but aren't tech companies and don't want to keep up with all this stuff. Honestly, I don't know how you people that aren't in this industry keep up with this industry. I honestly just haven't got a clue. But that is what Shane's new company does, is helps people stay abreast of all the business uh, tech that they need without having to be business tech experts. Just, you know, talk to them, figure out what they're doing, give them the right tools for the job uh, and all that. So good luck uh, to Shane and uh, and the other folks at boldzebras.com. And I'll probably try to have that joker on sometime just to give, give him a couple of minutes. I hate giving him a stage. You put a microphone in front of that guy. It's just obnoxious, but uh, probably do that at some point and let him tell you in more eloquent words than mine what his, uh, his new venture is. So good to see that, uh, that out there. <laughs> There's already, uh, calls in the chat room for a Shane and Todd show. It has been a while. I think ignite might be the last time Shane and I were up on stage together. It has been a while. So speaking of shameless self-promotion and I hate to tease you guys with that and then not jump right to it. Cause I know that's what the real, uh, the real thing here is. <laughs> Um, first one. So again, in a month, we've got dev intersection down in Orlando. I will be there. You can go to dev intersection.com and find out about, uh, all about that. And again, if you haven't signed up for dev intersection, when you sign up, put my last name in as your promo code. That is K L I N D as in Delta T as in Tango Clint. And that will get you 50 bucks off. It puts 50 bucks right into my pocket. And I, will almost assuredly use that money to buy another unnecessary Windows tablet. But the best part about that is it gives me bragging rights over all the other speakers if I have more people sign up than they do. So devintersection.com, promo code Clint, hit it. Uh, you will love it. Doing a couple sessions there. Because of some obligations that I had uh, here at home, I have to come back on Wednesday. So I think all of my sessions are on Tuesday. I forget. But if you're at Dev Intersection, Come find me, come introduce yourself, uh, say, hey, I would love to chat with you. I would love to see what you're doing in SharePoint, what you're doing in the cloud, Office 365, whatever. And um, and let, 
uh, and let me know. So come find me there. Then I will be at SP TechCon June 27th through the 30th. And those guys, uh, those turkeys, I almost said, I almost just uh, said, screw those guys. They sent out an email today about SP TechCon. And my name wasn't in the speaker list. So I sent David Rubenstein a very tersely worded email, uh, said some very unfashionable things about his mother. And we'll see if maybe I can't get uh, get my name on that next uh, that next email. But I will be at SP TechCon in Boston. That is June 27th through the 30th. And I'm not sure, um, you know, what all, if Rackspace is going to have stuff going on, I don't know. But uh, we'll be out there. And then I promised you guys for the last two weeks, I told you I had something cooking that I couldn't tell you about. Now I can tell you about it. I'm very excited about this. For the last couple of months, I've been doing some writing here and there for Petri.com. And one of the other things that I'll be doing for those guys is SharePoint webinars. And one of those webinars is coming up in a couple of weeks. So on March 24th, that is, don't tell me this one, I can figure this out. So Thursday, March 24th at noon central, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern. They will be doing a webinar on managing SharePoint backup and recovery like a pro. And since I'm the closest thing they have on staff to a SharePoint pro, I'm doing it. And uh, so I will be doing it. It's sponsored by Veeam. They make some backup and recovery software. So I get half the slot. They get half the slot. And I'm just going to be talking about what backup and recovery options you have, what disaster recovery means, things like that, you know, what you can do out of the box as much as much disaster recovery as I can fit in 20, 25 minutes, trying my darndest not to become the micro machine man and uh, speak at that, that speed. Daniel Glenn in the chat room noticed that the URL has refer and source tags and all that. I copied that out of their tweet earlier today. And so, uh, 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 that's why it's got all that. I wish there's some way for me to sneak some other things in there. So I got money every time, uh, every time somebody clicked it, but alas, I don't, I don't have that. So, you can sign up for it. It's free. It's on that page, Petri.com uh, webinars, and I will see you there. If you have any specific backup and recovery questions, let me know what they are. Or you can you can put them in there when we do it on a Thursday. But if you've uh, if you've got anything you'd like to hear me cover, go ahead and, and head it out there. So, <laughs> Lord, what is a dot back file? <laughs> That's a good question because anything can be a dot back file. I have definitely myself tried to uh, restore a dot back file the wrong way. It has happened. Um, so that is all for this week. Uh, the sequel thing still has me reeling. I still need to just you know get out, get out of my office, get some air. Uh, pretty crazy stuff. I will be back next week on March 14th, and we will talk about more good, yummy SharePoint uh, things. Again, if you're out on the, the internet, I'm at Todd Clint on Twitter, Todd.Clint at Rackspace. Reach out to me. Uh, say, hey, I would love to hear from you. And uh, until next week, talk to you guys later.